everyone, welcome to another vlog. I don't know if this is just going to be a House of Sky and Breath vlog, 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 or if it's just going to be a weekly reading vlog. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to get through the book. If I had the time, I know it wouldn't take me very long, but I don't have the time. I have to work this week, unfortunately. Was it reasonable to put time off for it? Probably should, but... I didn't, so here we are. And I've already started it last night. <laughs> it got midnight. <laughs> I have an ebook of it because I have a um what's the word? Paperback copy of Crescent City and it's only out in hardback at the minute I believe, so I don't know what I wanna do about that. Cause I want matching copies, but then I do love this book, so should I just get hard copies? Hardback copies? The Waterstones editions are really good as well, so I don't know. I'm going off on a complete tangent. So I've only read the prologue and the first two chapters at the minute. Now this might be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I don't like pro prologues. I don't know why, but it obviously sets up something that's relevant to the story. And in this case, I think it is relevant because it's going to affect Bryce and her kind of abilities. I don't know if I want this to be spoilery or not. I'm not sure so I'm kind of trying to steer away from it. So yeah it, it does set up but it was quite a long prologue and after waiting for this book, I say waiting like I didn't just read Crescent City like last month or oh, House of Birth and Blood sorry but it feels like I just wanted to dive straight back into the story and the prologue was just like oh like I wasn't properly taking it in either which is probably gonna bite me in the ass later but once we did get back into the story i just loved it oh my god the tension fucking sexual tension is just insane and i just can't even deal with it anymore it's just too much i'm just gonna say one spoilery thing so if you don't want to know anything spoilery then skip past this i guess come back later when you've read it i don't know but I had to stop reading last night because it was already super late and I didn't intend to start it but I couldn't help myself and I read the first two chapters and then the third chapter was um, going into Ruin's perspective <laughs> and the way that it freaking started like there's so much sexual tension in the beginning but apparently we're not doing that as much with uh, Ruin because the quote is something like he had smoked so much mirth fruit that he couldn't feel his face which was a damn shame because um a woman was currently sitting on it and i laughed out loud i'm not gonna lie at that like <laughs> it got me i fucking love this series i love sarah james's writing just i don't know it just captures me and i'm trash for it i know so many people are but yeah i just can't wait to continue i currently can't because i'm working so i'm just doing this update hi everyone so i've decided this is going to be a spoiler filled crescent city to house of sky and breath vlog because i just need to talk about things and the first thing being she's fucking done it Andrew. introduced another love interest i think cormac he is Posing to her? No, what's the word? Um, they're gonna get married, basically. And he's been set up as the complete dickhead, but I already love him. What's happening? I got confused about the prologue, and I said it was the girl that Bryce's powers are like, but that's not true. It's completely different. We're looking for a girl called Sophie and her brother, who have these kind of thunderbird powers so yeah i don't know what happened there just got that completely mixed up to be honest it's so fast paced there's a lot of action things are changing we've got a new archangel um we're kind of going on another mystery looking for this sophia and her brother and bryce is still learning things about danica that she didn't know it's just so why has it gotta be so complicated? Maybe this love thing's overrated My feet in the sand, my face in my hands I know it's my fault cause I never make plans And now you're telling me you love me But she don't even know me I'm down to hang but if you fall in you slow We had 
a couple of sex scenes between Bryce and Hunt. They didn't go all the way, but oh my god, the freaking tension between them has been building over the first book and the first third quarter of this book as well. And I really enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie, but. I don't know, I feel like my allegiance might sway. I just have that feeling. Now that I am 51% in, chapter 31, I think, I thought I'd give you an update of my general thoughts about the book. Um, so, <laughs> I am enjoying it, but there are a little bit of niggly things that are annoying me. One of them being that every reveal seems to be about Danica. Like, the girl is dead. Why are we still getting reveals about her? And Bryce, every time, is like, oh my god, I can't believe she didn't tell me this. Like, clearly, you weren't that good friends. You seriously just can't have been. The other thing that's annoying is that we are getting POV from Arian. I think that's how you say his name. He's the mer. And um, it's just a bit boring. I don't feel like it's necessary. It doesn't add anything to the story. I think the story could just carry on as normal without it. It, it was just added into the other POVs to be honest and it just really throws the pacing off. Like in the middle of a s chapter we will switch to his POV and I'm just like why? Like there was one particular instance where we were in like a kind of a tense battle with Bryce and Hunt and we switched to Ferrian's POV and I was like what the fuck? Like get me back being quite a few like action fight scenes now but we're not really getting anywhere with this search for Emil and I don't know why we keep going off on these like side things which is great and we all get to know the characters more and things the one thing I would say though is I could do with kind of a not a glossary exactly but like everybody's linked in some way like Hypoxia's sister is the hind and then the hind is dating Pollocks, like they're all kind of interwoven and I keep forgetting and some of them have multiple names that they're known by as well. In terms of like romantic stuff that's going on, Hunt and Bryce still haven't got any further. Hunt had to spend like two weeks in the barracks and I think that was just a plot device to stop them having sex to be honest. Ruin is speaking to Daybright who is one of like rebel leaders and there's definitely something there I'm so interested to see who Daybright is. I think it's the hind because of certain things that she mentioned about her dad being from a high-born family. There was just lots of little... Hello, I'm up to page 467, I think. A uh, couple of things to check in about. First one being, we had another kind of sex scene, but it was a phone sex scene between Bryce and Hun, and I don't know. I don't think I like phone sex, it makes me cringe so bad. What I also remembered just randomly as well is that I'm sure this book has a confirmed uh, threesome and I don't know who that's going to be. I, before I started reading this book, thought it was going to be Rune but now I'm not so sure. But we did have another scene between Rune and Daybright and she got woken up like between their connection it kind of like she dropped off the connection and Rune was a bit worried about her and then she came back to it and it was basically that like she'd had sex with someone um, but Rune kind of thought that she was being attacked but she confirmed that it was consensual so this has got to be Pollux which means that it's got to be Hind that is the Daybright is Agent Daybright and I'm convinced it's, it's gotta be. The other thing that happened has to do with Danica yet again. Are we surprised? No. But the interesting thing about this is that Bryce was looking for through some footage because Jessa Bird said that Danica was always hanging around uh, the gallery and that it wasn't just to hang out with Bryce. Jessa Bird is helping Bryce but in a really weird way in like that she already knows everything it seems like definitely knows more than is being let on 
because as soon as they found the right footage it was that Danica was looking in this book that was all about like wolf genealogy and as soon as she rang Jesper and said where's this book she sent it straight to her so it's good that she's helping but I clearly think there is more to it than that. So the hand showed up and threatened them and basically confirmed that Sophie is dead so that she hmm she didn't say she killed them they are just assuming that because they don't trust the hind but if my theory is correct then there is something more to it whether that be that the hind didn't kill Sophie or she did but that was to not blow her colour because I still reckon she's one of the rebels and was that um Bryce was in a lot of danger again and Hunt was going basically ballistic and Rune confirmed in Bryce's head that they are mates which is super interesting and I guess we're not switching love interests I know a lot of people didn't want love interests to be switched anyway but with the introduction of Cormac very early on in this book I definitely thought we were switching to him so I'm a little bit surprised I don't know how to feel about it like I feel like there definitely is still sexual tension in this book but it's still kind of pissing me off that we're not really getting much out of that like it's still the tension and it's like just do it already but I guess maybe now they can finally do that I don't know if Bryce is gonna tell Hunt or whether Hunt already realises that they're mates anyway of course I spoke too fucking soon and I the very next chapter was the smut that I think everyone has been waiting for it was good, okay. I enjoyed it. But the best thing about it was their powers merging and then Bryce teleporting them. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Loved it. <laughs> okay, Celestina. I don't know how to say her name. I'm not listening to the audio or anything, so. Celestina and Hypox Hypoxia. Oh my god, I'm probably just butchering these. I'm gonna call her Pax. I did not see that coming. Okay, that one took me by surprise. Honey did hint at it though. He did say he doesn't know her, the governor's preferences and if that is males. But yeah, didn't see that one coming. Oh my god, I'm still reeling, honestly. I'm going to try and kind of wrap up my thoughts on the book, but honestly, I'm not sure this is even going to be coherent at all because I, I just don't know. I'm feeling a lot. It was quite emotional, the ending. Oh my god. I know you're probably already going to see it on social media that everyone is talking about it already because as soon as I finished it I went on and tried to watch some videos and look on Twitter and see what people were saying. I didn't actually see any spoilers which is great but there were a few that sort of hinted towards the ending and oh my god I'm just in shock still. You'll have seen my reaction to reading that end part. It was just so good. First thing I think I'm going to talk about I've already kind of mentioned is Tharian's view. So we had his point of view throughout this book and I've already kind of briefly touched on this but I just didn't enjoy it. It really dragged down the story, it messed with the pacing, I wasn't as interested in that at all. I just kind of wanted to get back to the other point of views what was happening but the reason I think this is in there is definitely to set up for the House of Many Waters book. I don't know if that's the next one or if there... I don't even know how many books there is in this series, to be honest. But 
but it definitely felt like that to me that it was just in there to get you excited about what's going to happen in that particular book which was a little bit annoying and at the end of the book Tharian has disappeared so I reckon that we're obviously going to follow him in wherever he ended up wherever he ran off to because he's now a part of the Viper Queen's kind of like fighting ring thing I think as well so but I don't believe that the River Queen's just going to let that lie so there could be some interesting things to come of it but in this book for me it just wasn't interesting. Let's talk about Cormac okay I really like him and I don't know whether I'm supposed to I feel like he was set up in the beginning as this complete dick this just prince that was not caring about anyone but himself kind of thing but then we did get to see more of depth with him because he had this like connection with Sophie and he was trying to find her and was really upset uh, when he couldn't find her and then obviously she ended up dying so there was definitely more to him than that in the end it does say that Cormac died but that information comes from the Astari and I don't believe it like I could be wrong could be completely off with this and I guess we'll find out but for me until somebody confirms it in the kind of like inner circle I won't believe it because the Astari are just lying about everything so it's convenient that they lied well that they say this uh, that they an unknown Farian got away but Cormac's dead I feel like maybe they would use him the reason that I'm thinking this is primarily because he knows so much about being starborn he learned all that information he knows about the kind of like teleportation things he was teaching Bryce so much and then he's gone so either is because obviously Bryce isn't in there anymore she's gone to Perinthian so that could have a factor in it could be that they just want to take away Bryce's point of information to make it a little bit harder I'm not sure I'm not convinced but I still like him I know he didn't end up being the love interest which I'm still a little bit confused about I guess I thought that was going to happen and it didn't also can we talk about where is the threesome please tell me that I'm not just imagining this and maybe I'm getting it mixed up with from blood and ash but I don't think I am there was definitely a confirmed threesome in this book and unless I skipped past it I did not read it I, d I don't know what happened to that let me know if you guys do because I have no idea what happened with it. the next thing that we'll talk about is Bryce and Hunt and their relationship now I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion or not because I haven't really seen anybody's opinions yet obviously we've just finished in the book but there was something off in this book for me I was enjoying their tension and their banter and their kind of drama and everything in the first book and I feel like there was so much of that missing in this one I don't know it kind of felt a little bit stale and that could be partly down to my own sort of feelings that we were going to switch the love interest to Cormac so it may be that I just already disconnected myself from them to kind of prepare myself to get over that because it wasn't going to happen I mean there were instances don't get me wrong of like their banter or just them being really cute and things like that but I don't know it's hard for me to put into words but I feel like something was missing i just feel like if it had switched to cormac i just wouldn't have been bothered please let me know your thoughts on this as well because i don't know if i am the only one that felt that there was something a little bit off about it i mean bryce is an interesting character anyway she is very much driven by herself and she was keeping some secrets from hunt on this and then hunt kind of had a little bit of a wobble on whether they should even be together I am still not convinced that they are in game. I just don't know. I'm a bit all over the place. I can't quite get my thoughts together. So maybe I just need more time to reflect on this. So the ending. I don't really know what to say about it. So obviously Bryce has teleported to the wrong place and ended up meeting Rice and I just don't know what's going to happen with that. I was of the opinion that these wouldn't be connected. Like I'd kind of, I thought about it that they might be and then I'd convinced myself that they weren't. So 
I just don't know where we go and I'm so excited for the next one and I just knew this would happen and now we have to wait so long until it comes out but the other thing that was like really upsetting was um Hunt being made a slave again oh him getting like branded with the tattoo thing on his head that just killed me that was so sad I hate it like I just want him to be happy I want all the characters to be happy it's such a good like inner circle that I'm invested in all of them I think actually I haven't mentioned Rune um Rune and Daybright that was I mean I freaking guessed it I knew it it was the hind there was too many little sprinklings of information that I just grabbed onto that made me realize it was her and I want to see what happens with that because if I'm remembering correctly she's still undercover so her cover hasn't been blown yet and at the end of the book Rune and Hun were still being held by this story so what the hell's gonna happen with them I don't even know I think that's all I'm really gonna talk about if you haven't guessed I really enjoyed it I'm unsure of the rating I think it's probably sitting between a four and a five because I've got to acknowledge that there were parts that I didn't like with Farron's part of view and it was slow in the middle but it that's just the plot it's the characters for me and because I get so invested in them and then the ending just freaking blew me away I think it will end up being five stars because I just can't have an objective view on it I just fucking loved it to be honest <laughs> So thank you for watching the video. If you're not already subscribed already, please consider doing so and I will see you in my next one. Bye.